Hi, I'm Jason. Welcome to another quality video from appliancevideo.com. Today we will show you how to remove and replace the drive motor on this Whirlpool electric dryer. To begin the repair, we must first remove the console. Stop! Before beginning any repair, be sure to always disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for proper voltage. To remove the console, we're going to take three screws out of the back panel. Then with a flat bladed putty knife, we're going to depress the tabs on the front console. And lift up on the front of the panel at the same time. With those depressed, you can lift up on the control panel, rock it forward, disengage the Molex, and take your whole panel and set it aside. With our control panel removed, we have access to the two screws that hold the top panel in place. They are located left and right side of the control board. Remove these two quarter inch screws. And then your whole cover will slide forward and lift up at the same time and the whole cover will come off. To remove the front panel, you're going to need a flat bladed tool like a putty knife. There are two clips that hold the bottom panel on. You're going to take your putty knife, stick it in and run it along the edge until you can feel where that clip is. And you're going to take your putty knife and push up on the top of the panel and then push down and pull out. Same on the other side. And that'll disengage your front panel. You can slide it right off the clips then and set that off to the side. And then you want to take your blower housing, move the screws for that. Should be four quarter inch screws. You're going to want to pull your lit screen out. And the cover will come right off. Set both of those aside. Now to get the front top panel off, remove the two quarter inch screws at the bottom. Disconnect your Molex connector. Disconnect your springs. And then you're gonna need a T20 Torx bit to remove the two screws at the top. Now the front panel is loose, just pull forward and you'll also have to disconnect your door lock and the front panel will come right off. To remove the belt and drum, you're going to reach your hand inside, disengage the belt from the idler pulley, slide the belt off the drive pulley and lower the idler. Next, lift up on the belt from above, lift the drum out, and then set it aside. Now that we have access to the blower wheel, to remove the blower wheel, we're going to need a half inch to three eighths adapter, a three eighths extension, and a three eighths ratchet. The square end of that extension will fit into the square hole of the blower wheel. And on the blower wheel, it is stamped with an arrow pointing in the direction to remove it. On the other end, we are going to hold the shaft with an adjustable wrench and then twist in the direction of the arrow 
that it says to remove it. These are reverse hand threads. Just like that it comes loose and then you can spin it the rest of the way off by hand. And then set your blow wheel aside. Uh, something with a bad drive motor would be that the dryer would not turn on. To remove your drive motor, there are two clips that hold it in place. You take your screwdriver, push it down and pull out at the same time to disengage them. And then you can lift it and spin it to get your electrical connection off. And pull your two wires for your belt switch and then lift up and pull out and the motor will come right out and you can set it aside. To install your drive motor, slide your motor shaft in through the blower housing, resting the plastic round pieces on your brackets. Take your two brackets that hold it on and they will just snap right on. Plug in your belt switch. And then the electrical connection for the motor. And now you are ready to install your blower wheel. To install your blower wheel, slide it into the housing. And then you can spin your shaft and that will start it onto the threads. Now to install or to tighten it down, the arrow on here is pointing, it says tighten, the arrow is pointing this way. So this would be the opposite of loosening. You'll put your ratchet or your adjustable wrench on the other end of the shaft and give it a little snug. And just like that, we got it on. Now we can install the drum. With your belt installed on your drum already, lift the drum by the belt. Slide the drum into the frame of the dryer, resting the back of the drum on the rollers. And then you can let your belt hang. I like to give my belt a little spin just to make sure that I've got it all in the same spot. And then take your arms underneath the dryer, or the drum. Slide it around the drive pulley first. And then pull your belt tensioner up over the belt and onto the pulley. And then you can give it a little spin just to make sure you've got everything lined up. Now we can install the front panel. To install the front panel, you're gonna to wanna to rest the drum, the front of the drum on the rollers and lift up at the same time. And then rest the front panel on the frame of the dryer. Now you can take your quarter inch screws, line your holes up at the bottom. two torque screws at the top. Now we're ready to install our lint screen housing. To install the lint screen housing, we're gonna put the bottom of the housing in the frame first and then lift up, sliding it into the front cover.
and we can install our lint screen. Now for the door springs, right up in the corner here, you can feel a slotted hole that this top of the springs slide into. And down here at the bottom, there is a hole that the bottom spring clips into. And then we do the same on this side. And plug in our Molex connector for our moisture sensor. And then we are ready to install our lower cover. To install our lower cover, you slide the cover onto the two brackets here. And just snaps into place. With the front cover installed, now we can plug in our door switch and we are all set to install our top cover. To install the top cover, there are two tabs that are going to engage the top panel and hold it down. So you take your cover, slide it on, and push towards the back until those tabs have locked into place. Install your two screws. And now we can proceed on to installing the control panel. To install our console, we're going to start by plugging it in to the control board. We're going to line up the tabs on the back first, and then snap the front tabs in place. Then there are three screws that hold the back panel on. And that completes the repair. Thanks for watching another quality video brought to you by ApplianceVideo.com. If you found this video helpful, like this video and subscribe to our channel.